Well, welcome to the webinar, everyone. Uh, my name is Jake Kornick, and I'm a customer success manager here at Jamf. With me in the room today is Kyle Yonk, a technical support engineer. We both work within the customer experience department at Jamf. We're happy to discuss this topic with you all today. And that topic is deploying Apple Books to devices. I hope you're all here for that topic and are excited to learn more about this. <clears throat> Our goal for this webinar today is pretty straightforward. We want you to come away from this with an understanding of the requirements for deploying Apple Books, a general overview of how user-based deployments function, how they might differ from your standard method of deploying apps or other things, and then lastly, the steps of how to actually accomplish deploying Apple Books to your iOS or Mac OS devices. To start with, these are some of the requirements for Apple Book deployment. So if you plan on deploying Apple Books to iOS devices, they need to be iOS 7 or later. Now, if you plan on deploying to macOS devices, those devices will need to be on macOS 10.9 Mavericks or later in order to properly receive Apple Books. It might seem silly to say that a device needs to be institutionally owned, but within Jamf, this is actually referring to the institutional ability to manage a device. Within Jamf, there's ability to manage personally owned devices. You might hear the term PDM or BYO. But if this device is enrolled that way, it will not be able to receive Apple Books through this workflow. They need to be enrolled as an institutional device within your Jamf instance. The device must also be signed into iCloud. We will discuss user-based deployments in the next slide. But in order to receive licenses via this method, the device needs to have an Apple ID signed into it. <clears throat> Lastly, you will need to have users set up within Jamf Pro. Without these, there is no place to assign or scope content within Jamf Pro. Apple Books have to be scoped to users, and then the users have to be assigned to devices for the devices to receive content properly. Currently, most organizations will likely utilize device-based scoping and deployments with you know, with their app deployment needs. It's a, become the standard within the last three or so years. This involves scoping a license directly to a device and then deploying the app to the device in question. This bypasses the need for Apple devices, or so Apple IDs on these devices, so you can assign and deploy without having somebody signed in. Unfortunately, Apple Books are not able to be scoped to devices directly. They need to be first scoped out to a user, and those users need to have devices tied to them. It involves an Apple ID, but it, it accomplishes the same end result. Devices will get the content and a license, but it's just a different avenue of accomplishing that. The three main parts of user-based book deployment are the VPP invitation, assignment, and the deployment of the book itself. The VPP invitation itself associates the Apple ID to the device by prompting the user of the device to accept an invitation to then allow content to be deployed to that Apple ID. Once that is completed, VPP assignments can be made to deploy a license to that Apple ID. This doesn't mean that the book is actually on the device, but the license for the book is tied to the Apple ID. After step two, the book will show up under the Apple ID in iBooks, but the device won't actually have the book downloaded on it. Step three is where the ebook is deployed to the device itself. This, in tandem with the license, allows for the book to be enjoyed by the group of users that were sent this book in question. There are a few capabilities about Apple Books that we wanted to highlight in this webinar. First, you have the option of deploying uh, books automatically or through self-service. You can empower your students to get the books that they need rather than giving everything to everyone if you'd prefer to use the self-service route. But you can also ensure that people get the books that they need by automatically deploying them to users. Secondly, one of the benefits of deploying Apple Books to students is that they can interact with books using the features available through Apple. They can get help pronouncing words, look up definitions that they might not know for the words that they're reading, and make notes for themselves throughout all their devices. Apple does a great job with accessibility and functionality, so using books in this medium is very beneficial. Third, Apple Classroom app and single app mode can be used with iBooks. 
If you want to make sure that students are reading when they're supposed to be, you can lock them into iBooks to make sure that they're not playing games or browsing the internet, anything like that. This can also be handy if you want a device that can be only used for reading long term. Using single app mode, you can lock devices into iBooks, and therefore it is only for reading until that profile has been removed. Lastly, we wanted to touch on the fact that licenses aren't able to be recycled or transferred between Apple IDs. Once an assignment has been made to an Apple ID, it cannot be undone or revoked. That book will stay with the student's Apple ID forever. Be careful when making assignments to books, especially if those books cost money. Never want to have an instance where you assign a book accidentally or to the wrong group, so take caution, especially when you have to buy these books for students. I'm going to hand it over to Kyle now. He's going to tell you about the steps to actually deploying this. Hi, everyone. Over the next few slides here, we're going to be reviewing the actual workflow for Apple Book deployments. So the first step that we're going to jump through is the VPP invitations. And you'll notice on the screenshots on the right-hand side and the steps on the left, they'll all be um, in the same order. So it'll kind of give you a little bit more detail about the steps that we're going through. So to kick things off, what we're going to do is we're going to jump up to the user section in the upper left corner of your Jampro server. Then after this, we're going to click on VPP invitations on the far left side. After this, we're going to select the new button on the far right side. Step four is going to require us to name the invitation. After this, on step five, we're going to take it the we're going to go to the drop down menu and we're going to select the VPP account that we want to pull the licenses from. Now on step six, we're going to decide what distribution method we want to go through. I always recommend prompt users to accept slash make available and self service. This way, as you'll see in a later slide, it will not only prompt on the home screen of the, of the device, but we can also go into self service to accept the VPP invitation. Next, after we decide the distribution method, we're going to go to the scope tab in the upper left and we're going to scope this out to the desired users. And then in the lower right, we're going to select the blue save button. This is the slide that's going to show us what it, the behavior on the device looks like. Um, after we scope that invitation, it'll take a few minutes and then on the device we would expect to see a prompt that shows allow app and book assignment. Um, after you select continue on this prompt, you'll be asked to sign in with the Apple ID. After this, you'll have to read through Apple's terms and conditions and select accept. Once that's done, the VPP invitation has been taken care of. Um, you will also want to note that if an Apple ID is already signed in to the App Store on the device, you'll want to make sure that it matches with the one that we're using for the invitation. Next up is the assignments, and as Jake alluded to earlier, this is where we're actually deploying the licenses from the VPP token to the Apple ID. So just like in the previous step for the invitation, we're going to go under the Users tab in the upper left. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to select VPP Assignments on the left-hand side. And then third, we're going to go ahead and select New on the right side. After this, we're going to start under the General section. And just like before, we're going to name the assignment and select our desired VPP account. After this, we're going to go to the ebooks section. And then for step seven here, we're going to look through the list of books and decide which one we want to deploy licenses for, and then enable the checkbox to the left of those books. After this, we're going to scope these assignments out to the desired users, and then we're going to save in the lower right. Next up, this is the part of the workflow where we actually deploy the ebook itself. For this, we're going to be again under the user section and we're going to select ebooks on the left hand side. Quick note here if you ever forget the order of these steps, you'll notice that on the left hand side of your Jamf Pro server, everything is in order. 
So you'll notice that it starts with invitation, then goes to assignments, and then ebooks is after that. So once we select ebooks on the left hand side, we're going to click the new button on the far right. And then we're going to go ahead and enable the ebooks available in iBooks Store option. After this, we're going to go ahead and select next in the lower right. And then we're going to go ahead and search the iBook store for the book itself, just by the title of the book. After this, we're going to go ahead and select Next in the lower right. And then we're going to find the correct version of the book and select Add. Be careful with this example, Romeo and Juliet. There are a lot of different versions out on the uh, Apple Bookstore of this content. So if you want to make sure what you really want to make sure of is that we select add on the book that we purchased the licenses for. So just a little tip here, I always like to look at the icon of the book itself, then the name, then the price, and then the author to make sure that everything lines up. Next up, this section is where we actually start the deployment of the book. So what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to start by selecting the distribution method that we want to go with. Like Jake was talking about earlier, we can make sure that these books install automatically so that it's ready to go for the students right away. Or we can go ahead and scope this to self-service, which allows the student to have a large catalog of books that they can download at their leisure. After this, we're going to go ahead and select scope in the upper left. And then we're going to scope this book to the desired devices or users. After this, we're going to go ahead and select Save in the lower right. And then the book should be deployed. One thing we did want to bring up at this point in time is that there is an alternative to searching the Apple Bookstore um, for your content. Instead, like we reviewed in steps one through eight, we can actually use the Populate Purchased Content, Purchased VPP Content feature under our settings. And to do that, we're going to go into the Jam Pro server and we're going to select the gear icon in the upper right corner to go to the settings. After this, we're going to go ahead and select Global Management on the left hand side. Then we're going to go ahead and select the VPP Accounts icon. After this, we'll have to select the Edit button in the lower right corner. Then we will go ahead and enable the Populate Purchased VPP Content checkbox. It is at the bottom of the page, so you will have to scroll a little bit. After this step, we're going to go ahead and save in the lower right. And then as for step 7 here, I just included that we can actually go back to the previous slide and go through those steps to actually deploy the content. So this is just an alternative to having to go through and search for the book in the Apple Bookstore. Next, I just wanted to go over a brief summary of everything that we reviewed here. So starting with the VPP invitation, this is really the bridge between the device, the user assigned to that device, and the Apple ID. And that allows us to be able to next go to VPP assignments and start sending out those licenses. So just to reiterate, the invitations are for associating the devices with the Apple ID, and the assignments are for deploying the licenses to that Apple ID. Next up, we have the Apple or the eBooks section, and this is where we actually deploy the book itself. It's worth noting here that we can actually stop after the VPP assignment section. And what will happen is you will see content in the books app and you'll see a little cloud icon in the lower left corner of the book. And all this means is that the student will have to click the book to process the download. And that's how we deploy eBooks. Thank you so much for joining us today. We really hope you learned uh, a bit or something about deploying Apple Books to devices uh, and that this was beneficial for you. Um, thank you for joining us. Have a great day.